Imam bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said that even your shadow leaves you in the dark. And we feel that at times when we're most in need, that the people that we thought we could count on are not there. And that drives you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that drives you to call upon Allah. And hopefully it causes you to reflect in a way that you don't abandon people the way that you felt abandoned in your time of need, that you will rise to the occasion to be there for people. And one thing about the Prophet wasallam is the way he made you feel and the attention that he gave you and the way that he looked at you and the way that he joked with you, all of that was there. But what was also there was that the Prophet wasallam would not leave you in your time of need, even if his need was greater than yours. You find this as a trait of the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca, even under persecution, right? Where this man from afar comes to the Prophet ﷺ to complain to him about a debt that was owed to him from the same people that were oppressing the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ takes this man who he doesn't even know to the door of Abu Jahl, who he knew very well, who used to torture the Prophet ﷺ and murder his companions and demand that Abu Jahl pay the man back. So how was it then for people that knew the Prophet ﷺ when you had established a relationship with him? First and foremost, Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu says the Prophet ﷺ was never asked for anything to which he responded, no. The Prophet ﷺ would always do something. He would always say something sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Now he had to apportion the attention that he gave to certain things but the Prophet ﷺ never fully dismissed a person. And that starts off, by the way, with his charity. And even if a person took something from the Prophet ﷺ in a harsh manner, the Prophet ﷺ did not respond in like manner. Anas anhu says, I was walking with the Prophet ﷺ one time and he was wearing a mantle of Najran with a thick border. So he had this garment with a very thick border. And this Bedouin man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he started to pull at that mantle so violently that he left marks on the neck of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he's saying, A'tani mimma a'taka Allah, give me from what Allah gave to you. And he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he turned to him, he smiled at him. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam simply took off that burd, that mantle, and he gave it to the man Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And on top of that, Anas Sallallahu Ta'ala Anhu said, he ordered for him a portion of the sadaqa, a portion of the charity. So if someone asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a sa'il, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would give, and that was not always monetary. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would intervene on behalf of anyone that asked for his intercession. We already mentioned that, especially with the orphans, the Prophet Wasallam would intervene on their behalf for anything because they were the most susceptible to exploitation. The smallest disputes, the Prophet Wasallam would be brought in and he would intervene Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If there was a territory dispute between neighbors about where a garden starts or finishes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would intervene and he tried to make peace between the neighbors. If you had a debt that you needed to be paid, if the Prophet Sallallahu could not pay the debt on your behalf, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would go to the one that you owed the debt to and he would encourage him to be lenient towards you. If you needed to get married, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would look for a spouse for you. If you had a marriage dispute, the Prophet Sallallahu would try to help you in your marriage dispute. And these are again with people that were not, you know, considered from the nobility of Medina or people that are famous in the Sirah. These are just people that the Prophet saw as his brothers and sisters in need. And he always responded to the call Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he taught and lived this as a form of worship. For me to go out there and to walk with my brother in his hour of need is more beloved to me than doing i'tikaf, than secluding myself in this masjid, meaning the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for an entire month. Think about that. And one of the beautiful descriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that regard is the way that he would do so. Abdullah ibn Abi Awfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, وَلَا يَأْنَفُ أَنْ يَمْشِيَ مَعَ الْأَرْمَلَةِ وَالْمِسْكِينَ فَيَقْضِيَ لَهُ الْحَاجَةِ that the Prophet ﷺ was not too proud to be seen walking with the widow and walking with the orphan, walking with the poor person, all the way until he fulfilled their need. So you could see the Prophet ﷺ as a common sight in Medina, 
carrying someone's load. You could see the Prophet ﷺ assisting the elderly woman to her home to carry her groceries from the marketplace. You could see the Prophet ﷺ doing all of these tasks that were considered low for the lowest person in Medina, but the Prophet ﷺ was honored to do them. And one of the most beautiful narrations in this regard, and SubhanAllah, we, we often hear this narration paraphrased, but really, the context of this and, and the response of the Prophet ﷺ is just so beautiful and tells you so much about him sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Anas radiallahu anhu says there was this woman, kana fi aqliha shayt. She had a mental illness. And that's significant, right? That she came to the Prophet ﷺ and she had a mental illness and the Prophet ﷺ could have easily dismissed her, right? And she comes to the Prophet ﷺ and she says, Ya Rasulullah, inna li ilayka haja. I need you, Ya Rasulullah. I need something from you. You know how the Prophet ﷺ responds to this woman? He responds with such love and such attention. He says, Ya Um Fulan, khudi ayya turuqi shi'ti faqumi fihi hatta aqumu ma'aki. He said, Oh, mother of so and so, pick any place in Medina, choose any path that you want me to be in, and I will go exactly where you call me to. Call me to any place, call me to any task, and I will go there with you. She would take the Prophet ﷺ wherever she wanted in Medina. SubhanAllah. How beautiful is that? The most important man in society. And this woman could come to the Prophet ﷺ and she could say to the Prophet ﷺ, I want to go here, I want to go here. And the Prophet ﷺ would go with her all over Medina to do whatever she needed. And not once did the Prophet ﷺ remove that comforting smile from his face or make her feel like she was insignificant or she was a burden upon him.